Welcome to the E. Parchala lecture series on computer science for postgraduate students. Uh, we are in the 19th module of the, uh, on the, of the lecture series for the subject computer graphics and visualization. Uh, we had 18 modules earlier and the previous module, the 18th module, we discussed about uh, color models uh, where we talked about uh, the most popular, uh, popularly used color models like RGB, CMY, uh, the HSV, HLS color models and so on. Now, in this uh, session today, in this module, we will be talking about uh, rendering an important concept, an important topic uh, as far as computer graphics is concerned. Uh, the subject of rendering is too vast and since we have a shortage of time, we will be uh, talking about the fundamentals of the concept of rendering. Okay. So, rendering involves or rendering in 3D is all about uh, uh, imitating the real world as closely as possible. As we discussed earlier in the previous modules, uh, our aim in 3D is to imitate the real world as closely as possible and give it a real life like uh, object, feeling of a real life object. So, uh, what shall we do or what do we do to uh, achieve this what is called visual realism? So, let us uh, learn more about it. The learning objectives are uh, to understand how to apply shading models, uh, textures and shadows for visual realism. So, this is our objective. Uh, to also understand the techniques of ray tracing, an important technique used for rendering. So, these are the keywords. Uh, let us uh, understand what is actually visual realism. Uh, in the case of uh, 3D graphics, as we know, so we can create a lot of objects, but how do we give them the real life like objects or real uh, object like feeling? So, for this, we have various stages through which we should go, uh, so that we achieve uh, the uh, objective of visual realism. So, the stages of visual realism as you can see are wireframe model, first we will be forming a wireframe model of uh, an object which is the skeletal version of the object, you can call it as the flat shaded version, the smooth shaded version, then we will proceed to the light lighting. So, we can, we can add lighting to the 3D scene that we have created. We can add textures and we will be adding shadows and some materials or we will be giving some material properties and finally, some kind of environmental maps or bump maps or MIP maps. So, that uh, for some objects, uh, they are so highly reflective that uh, the surrounding environment is uh, seen on the surface of the objects. So, because of the uh, material properties with which the surface is made up of. Uh, this is where uh, giving visual realism involves a sequence of steps uh, which are to be uh, followed. So, what is actually rendering? So, we will be computing the color of a pixel given a chosen viewing position. So, what should be the final color of a pixel? So, for example, imagine a 3D world, a collection of objects are there and now we are choosing a position in the 3D world and now we are taking a view of the 3D world. So, from the chosen position and the orientation, so how the world appears? Because as we know, in the real world, uh, depending on where we stand and depending on how we orient ourselves, we will have a different view of the world. So, the same thing we are going to imitate here in the 3D simulated world. So, visual realism is how to model 3D objects that look exactly similar to real world objects. So, in essence it is simulation of the real world. So, let us see how the objects are rendered. So, you can see here on the screen uh, you have uh, a wireframe model. So, this is the wireframe model, then we are applying some shading. So, we call it flat shading. Then we further tweak it and uh, so we give it a more uh, what is called we, we add more uh, lighting conditions or we add more lights, we, uh, we compute the reflection properties, we assume some material properties for the various objects and so on and so forth. So, that we compute the final light that gets reflected from the surface of the objects and so that they appear as realistic as possible. So, then we further add textures and as you can see in the last uh, picture here, uh, some textures are added. So, that depending on what texture we add, it appears to be made up of that object. So, that is where uh, this texture here looks like made up of wooden. Uh, it is a wood texture that we have applied on the object. So, that is how we achieve uh, visual realism. 
So, what is a shading model? So, we are going to start uh, looking at the first, so in the, in the sequence of visual realism or by, for achieving visual realism, we follow a sequence of steps as I said. So, the first thing is the wireframe model. The wireframe model is a skeletal version of uh, the 3D world or the objects in the 3D world. So, we are uh, uh, applying shading. Once the wireframe model is there, the next step is to apply shading. So, shading is uh, the essence of, of shading or the uh, idea of shading is to compute uh, the interactions of light with the surfaces of the object. So, uh, how do we compute the light interactions or say there is a light and the light is incident upon uh, an object and how the object reflects light or how the object absorbs light or with what materials the objects are made up of so that their surface properties are evident and uh, when we observe the objects from a distance, how do they appear? So, all this uh, computation of light or interactions of light with various uh, surfaces of objects is all done in the shading model. So, as you can uh, see here, a shading model dictates how light is scattered or reflected from a surface. Uh, assume that there are two types of lights that illuminate objects in a scene. So, uh, for simplicity, we can assume that the world is illuminated, the world here means the 3D world that is the imaginary 3D world is illuminated by lights from external sources which can be point lights or ambient light it can be. So, the daylight so that we can assume. So, a shading model, uh, the job of a shading model is to compute the amount of colored light that gets reflected from a surface given a viewing position. So, finally, what we observe is the reflected light and given a viewing position, given a set of lights and assuming the light properties, assuming the material properties. So, how much light gets reflected or, uh, and what we see actually in, in our eye is what is to be computed. So, the shading model does a big job of uh, computing light interactions with surfaces of objects. So, how uh, does the light interact with uh, objects in a 3D world? So, you, you can we can take the real world analogy again, uh, uh, a, an object can be a black body, an object can be highly reflective, an object can be uh, made up of say a combination of reflective and absorptive properties or it is something like whatever light that is incident on an object, if it gets completely absorbed, we call it a black body. Uh, as you can see here in the uh, picture, uh, when the light is incident upon uh, a black body, the whole of the light gets absorbed and nothing gets reflected. So, but what we observe is a reflected light, okay. what we observe is only the reflected light. So, a black body is something like whatever light that is incident absorbs the whole light, so it appears black or dark. So, unlike that, we have another kind of object where say if the surface of the object is imagined to be like this, very much ruggy, rough and uh, it is uh, made up of, it is made up of uh, what is called very rough uh, texture kind of um, surface. So, when light is incident, some light is absorbed, some light is reflected in multiple directions. So, that is called diffuse reflection. So, a part of the light is absorbed and some part of the light gets reflected in all directions equally. The other kind of reflection is specular reflection. So, in the kind of uh, surfaces that uh, uh, exhibit this property, or like say where when the light is incident, the whole of the light gets reflected in only one particular direction. So, that means you will see what is called a bright spot on the surface or that is called specular highlight. So, as we can observe that most of the surfaces exhibit both specular and diffuse properties of their surfaces. So, let us uh, see how uh, light computation is done, how the interaction of light with objects is done. So, what are the factors that are involved or uh, what are the computational parameters that are taken into account? Here the amount of light incident, so how much light is falling on the object, the color of the incident light, so color also matters. The relation between viewing direction and the incident direction, it is also important because uh, we are viewing from somewhere, the light is incident and if it does not get reflected in the direction of viewing we do not have to bother about computing uh, the light in the direction of viewing. Uh, and the surface properties of objects because they are going to define whether the light, uh, how much of light should get reflected from the surfaces. The type of the light sources in the scene 
uh, the reflective properties of neighboring objects. So, sometimes the neighboring objects also play a major role and ambient light and its color as well. So, colored light also influences the way that we observe a, a light uh, or the reflected light. So, interaction of light with objects can be categorized into two which is uh, diffuse scattering and specular reflections. As we discussed earlier, a diffuse uh, scattering is where the amount of light incident on the object, a part of it is reflected in all possible directions, a part of the light is absorbed. So, as you can see a ball like object is shown here, when it is made up of material with diffuse properties it will appear like this. But when an object is made up of uh, metals or maybe like uh, plastic like objects or like say shiny surfaces, whatever light that falls on the object, most of the light gets reflected in a specific direction. So, that is why you would see what is called a specular highlight. This is called this bright spot on the surface is called a specular highlight. So, as I said uh, earlier, most of the material, uh, most of the objects are made up of surfaces or materials which exhibit uh, a combination of both diffuse and specular properties. So, uh, flat shading so uh, is a basic version of shading uh, where we tend not to bother much about uh, uh, the various uh, undulations or the kinds of surface properties. What we do is we imagine the surfaces are made up of polygonal uh, flat faces and also that we consider one uh, polygonal face on the object and we compute the normal vector for that, compute the amount of reflected light assuming a given light source and a viewing direction and then for the whole of the polygonal face we will be applying the same color or the same intensity. So, that is where uh, because we apply the same color throughout the polygonal face, uh, as you can see here the donut like object here appears. Uh, jagged and roughed up as all the polygonal individual polygonal faces are very much clear. Uh, with shading techniques, better shading techniques like smooth, smooth shading techniques which we will be seeing later, we will be able to uh, give the object a very smooth like appearance. So, as you can see in the smooth shading, uh, there are two uh, standard shading techniques used, one is Gaurat shading, the other one is Fong shading. In the case of Gaurat shading, we interpolate the colors uh, assuming the vertices of a polygonal face are given various colors and we try to interpolate uh, the in between colors uh, between two vertices. So, we interpolate the colors between two known uh, vertex colors. Well, in the case of Fong shading, the normal vectors are interpolated. So, unlike Gaurat shading here, the normal vectors are interpolated. As we know, uh, from earlier discussions, normal vectors is an important uh, component of 3D world because uh, normal vectors identify the orientation of an object in the 3D world. So, what we will do is we will be computing the normal vectors of various uh, vertices and then we will be interpolating the normal vector directions. So, that is more accurate and it gives a better surface than the uh, Gaurat shading. So, as you can see, the flat shaded one, uh, a ball flat shaded appears like so uh, uh, what is called tessellated, uh, a Gaurat shading one appears like this and a Fong shading one is so perfect and smooth. So, the light sources, so once the shading is done, shading models are done, so we can also imagine the light sources in the 3D world. So, uh, we can imagine four types of lights, one is the point light, the other one is the direction light, the spotlight and the area light. So, light also has got properties. So, as you can imagine light can be directional, so we have a direction for it. You can attenuate that is you can fix up a distance after which the light intensity um, dies or the it is a it is the attenuation. Uh, you can imagine the light properties like diffuse, ambient, specular. Uh, the color of the light is also an important uh, factor which we can consider. So, here uh, uh, let us uh, go further into the next level of visual realism which is applying textures. So, we have added lights, we have added, we have computed the shading model or we have used the shading model and the next step is to add textures. So, by adding proper textures, we would get a feel for the uh, kind of material with which the object is made. So, in 3D graphics, 
uh, we can make surfaces look more realistic by uh, trying various textures like which are made up of either bitmap or procedural. Uh, what is a texture? Texture is fundamentally an image. Okay. What we will do is it is something like uh, say imagine you, you wanted a globe like uh, object. Uh, you can imagine a sphere like thing. First what you would do is you would take a sphere and then you would wrap around a sheet of uh, a printed uh, a flat globe. Uh, you, you would wrap around that sheet around the spherical surface. So, that is what we are going to do here. We are going to imagine a, a 2D map and then we wrap around the 2D map uh, object of choice. So, this is uh, there are two ways in which you can imagine a texture. One is either you can imagine a bitmap or you can use a mathematical equation to create a bitmap. Okay. So, to create a map or to create a uh, procedure that creates an image or an intensity value. So, how do we apply textures given a 3D object in the 3D world and we have now a texture which is a 2D image. Okay. Now, as you can see here, this is the 3D object which is a cylindrical surface and this is the bitmap image which we would like to use it as texture. So, we are trying to take this texture and wrap it around the cylindrical surface. So, how do we do is our aim is to find for every position on the cylinder or the cylindrical surface, we try to compute or we try to find an equivalent uh, pixel from the bitmap texture uh, image. So, once this image is now used being used as texture you know, for texture image, it is called uh, it is a texture and it is in 2D world. So, for every pixel in the on the cylinder or for every position on the cylinder, we will be using, uh, we will be computing or we will be selecting a position on the 2D world. So, this uh, uh, in between 0, 0 and 1, 1 space is called the texture space. So, we are in the we are in the pixel world or we once we collect a pixel and then use it as a texture, we call it a texel, uh, pixel and texel. So, okay. Uh, once the texel is used uh, to map or to attach to uh, a 3D position, now the texture we say is applied to the 3D object. So, that is how we do it in the reverse order. So, this is the texture space. For every position here, we normalize the uh, bitmap uh, 2D space into texture space which is uh, between 0, 0 and 1, 1. So, we take each and every point and we convert that into an equivalent value and we find a suitable pixel here a suitable uh, position here. Okay, now, you can see this order of uh, the image space, okay, a texture space, the object space, the viewing space and the screen space. So, the arrow marks are in the reverse direction. Okay. Uh, you should observe that. So, we will be uh, going it in the reverse direction, okay, screen space, viewing space, object space, texture space and in the image space. Okay. The texture space is the normalized version of the image space. Okay. This is what is the texture space and textures also can be used to or like say the bitmaps also can be used to create uh, roughness on surfaces. For example, you can imagine orange. The orange surface is such that there are lot of dimples on the surface. So, the surface is not smooth like your ball or spherical surfaces, perfectly spherical. Orange is a spherical, but its surface is lot of, it has got lot of dimples. Dimples are uh, lows on the surface or the low means it is a now, it is a valley like or it is a low. As you can see here on the teapot, there are a lot of dimples. So, how do we create such a surface uh, is we can use the bitmap or the texture space and we can try to perturb the normal vectors of the surface of the object by the perturbing the normal vectors according to the texture values or according to the intensity values in the texture space. So, that is where we can modulate this modulation gives us a feeling that. So, what we can do is uh, on the low you can uh, uh, you can redirect the normal vector so that it sees in a different direction so that the reflection at that point is almost minimal. Okay. When no light is reflected from a point it appears as if it is a dimple okay. otherwise it is a high. So, it is a low and it is high. So, we can uh, recreate such uh, surfaces which have dimples like orange the surface of an orange width uh, by modulating the uh, normal vector using the texture values. Uh, and reflection uh, mapping is one another technique where you can reflect 
the surrounding environment on the surfaces of, of objects. Often you can see when somebody wears a spectacle, uh, you can see uh, the surrounding environment uh, uh, seen on the spectacle. So, that is uh, the nearby objects or the objects in the outer, uh, outer world are seen on the surfaces of the highly reflective metallic uh, objects. Like you can as you can see here, the metal teapot, uh, the surrounding environment can, is seen on the surface. So, this can be done by techniques like ray tracing. Uh, we will see further. Uh, the shadows is the next step of visual realism. Uh, so, once we add lights, it is obvious that there are shadows. So, if the light is unlike an ambient light, there will be a shadow. Okay. So, how do we compute shadow or how do we create a feeling that uh, the object is casting a shadow? So, for that what we can do is, we can imagine a light source and we can compute, uh, we can take projections of all the faces of the object. Imagine a cube there are 6 faces for the cube. Now, you can imagine a light source, uh, you can compute the projected version of the uh, of each of the faces on a flat plane which is basically the ground. Okay. So, once we add up all the projected versions of all the 6 faces on a planar uh, surface like ground, we will once the sum the projected versions are summed up, we will get the shadow shape. So, the shape of the shadow is computed by summing up all the uh, projected versions of all the possible faces of an object. Here the example given is for a cube, you can read here further which you would understand better. So, the last step in the uh, towards visual realism is ray tracing. Ray tracing is such a fantastic technique where uh, it is and it is so complex, it's, it takes quite a lot of time. The algorithms are so complex that uh, to give us a real lifelike object. Uh, a feeling, uh, it's it's very difficult because of lot of interactions of light, because of the colored uh, conditions of the light, because of the viewing positions chosen, because of interactions of light with various objects, uh, and because of the surface properties of the objects, we get to see va various kinds of uh, surfaces and objects. Uh, ray tracing is a global illumination-based rendering method for generating realistic images on the computer. So, adding realism is so fundamental and it is the ultimate objective. Uh, the advantages of ray tracing are to enhance visual realism, lighting simulation, hidden surface removal, uh, shadow calculation, texturing, reflections and transparency. As you can see here, the principle of ray tracing is to uh, calculate uh, what is called that is the amount of light that reaches a given pixel position. So, imagine we are standing here and we are seeing the world and before your eyes you can imagine a rectangular grid, the grid is our uh, viewing area. Okay. Uh, for in the grid for each pixel position, you can start with the first pixel position on top and you can fire a ray into the 3D world and uh, the light or the ray hits various objects while it moves. Imagine the 3D, uh, the ray hits the objects in the 3D world, when it hits depending on the surface properties of the object, the ray will take multiple directions. Some of the light rays get absorbed and some of the light rays you can, you can divide the light rays or the intensities further and you should track the ray till uh, it reaches the light source. Because say, we have to track a ray from the grid position or the from every pixel position on the grid towards the light source. Why? It is in fact, uh, you can imagine okay, why it should be done like that. In fact, every light originates from a light source and then it uh, reflects and refracts and then it gets absorbed and finally, lot of light rays uh, go in multiple directions and in fact, we should track the light ray like that. No. Why? Because we are not interested in all those light rays that emanate from the light source and then go in all possible directions and which finally, do not reach this grid, okay, which finally, do not reach this grid. If we do that, that is if we track the light from the source towards uh, to various into various positions, we will be wasting lot of time and source resources and uh, thereby we lose a lot of uh, processing uh, power as well, uh, wasting lot of processing power as well. So, instead we will be selecting a pixel position on the grid and we will be firing a light, uh, we will be firing a ray into the 3D world and it takes multiple directions and we can calculate reflections and refractions and 
the final uh, finally these should reach the light source. So, we will be calculating how much light intensity finally reaches the uh, pixel position here. So, for every pixel position we should calculate this. So, for the entire grid once we do this we will get to see such fantastic images as you can uh, see here these are the uh, ray traced images. Uh, as you can notice uh, simple and ordinary images look like this, ordinary uh, visuals look like, look like this, but ray traced images uh, look like this. As you can see how fantastically the reflections and refractions and the transparencies, there can be transparent objects, partly opaque and partly transparent objects. And imagine such complex objects in the 3D world, but we can still fantastically uh, do this uh, rendering of various objects, so that they appear like real life like uh, by ray tracing technique. Uh, with this we come to the end of the 19th module of uh, the computer graphics uh, and visualization subject. We will be continuing in the next module with the uh, topic uh, with the animation which will be the uh, next topic in the 20th module. Thank you.